Picking a laptop or new computer for music production can be a very daunting and confusing process if you don't know what are the specs that are being used when you produce music, or if you do not know how to read the computer specs of a laptop to tell how strong or, or fast it is. So in this video, I decided to help you out and give you some distinctions and advice on how to pick your laptop in the best of ways. As a friend, this is Alex, and a few days ago, I, were in, I was in London, I posted a story on my Instagram about my Asus ROG, which is my laptop that I use whenever I travel. I've been using it for the last few years and it served me quite well. For example, the Paris of the Caribbean track that I wrote, I wrote it initially with that laptop. And it's still, like, it can read that song itself. So it's quite strong, quite powerful. And now, when I posted that story, a lot of people asked me, like, what is, you know, what's the best laptop for music production? What is your laptop you're using? What are the best specs to know to, to have in a laptop if you want to produce music with a laptop? So I decided to make this video because the number of people asking that question was overwhelmingly high. But I should, you know, start with a caveat. First, I'm only going to talk about, you know, how to choose your laptop. In terms of configurations which I recommend, I'm going to leave them in the description of this video so you can go there and click and just check them out yourself. But I should say also that my knowledge in laptops is obviously limited. So if you know some models which I haven't mentioned in my list, feel free to leave them in the comments so anyone can go and check them out. But yeah, I wanted to say laptops, uh, you know, if you want to get a laptop, you might first want to consider getting a desktop because desktops computer are way less expensive. You know, for the same price that you, that you pay a laptop, you can get a desktop, uh, and which is going to be way more powerful. Second thing is that desktops are way more durable because there is more space in them to, for air to pass and everything. While laptops, you carry them around. They're very tiny, so the air doesn't pass so well compared, compared to desktops. And they're more liable to be broken very easily. Third, uh, computers like desktops can be easily customizable and you know, interchanged. Like you can change the peripherals. What would a laptop? Sometimes you might not be able to change anything. Sometimes you might be able to change the RAM or add some SSD drives, but you cannot change the uh, uh, CPU. There are so many things you cannot change about the laptop. So laptops, less durable, more expensive, less customizable, but they're there, you know, you can carry them around. So you might want to get a laptop if you need to produce music outside of your studio or outside of your place or your room or whatever. But if you have a place where you always produce music, you have a desk at your place, at your studio or your home, and you only produce music there, don't buy a laptop because it's a huge waste of money. Rather buy a desktop, and I have a video on this YouTube channel that talks about a guide on how to put up a nice budget desktop for like $500 or something. But I'm also probably going to make a video in the future where I talk about my desktop build, which is obviously more expensive and way more powerful than that one. But now, let us talk about laptops. The things you need to look out for in terms of laptops are a few. So first is CPU second RAM, and third, the storage. Let's use this one as an example. It's an Asus ROG Strix SCAR edition. This is supposedly the upgrade of my two-year-old Asus ROG. Now, this is a gaming laptop, which means this includes a graphics card. Indeed, a GTX 1050 4GB Ti. That <laughs> obviously makes this laptop a bit more expensive than it would be if it didn't have a graphics card. So. Would it make sense to buy a laptop with a graphics card? If you also want to play games in your laptop, then yes. If you don't need to play games, you don't need a graphics card for music production at all. Although uh, the good thing about this sort of Asus ROG configurations is that they're a quite famous brand and everything. Repair parts, it's going to be easier to find repair parts for an Asus ROG compared to a Lenovo PC or something. Uh, so that's to be considered. Anyway, let's talk about the things you need to look out for. The CPU. As I said in the video where I explained about the budget build, the CPU is the part of your computer which is going to be liable, which is going to be um, responsible for reading your project file and play back, playing back the music with no glitches, no error, no you know, crackles, whatever. The stronger the CPU is, the less playback mistakes you're going to have in real time. Ideally, you might want to get an i7 of the 8th generation. The higher the generation, the stronger the CPU is going to be. This one is 8th generation i7. Uh, it says 8750 H processor. You need to look at the generation, if it's an i7, the number of cores, which is 6 here, and the gigahertz. The gigahertz are pretty much the speed of the CPU, and the number of cores are sort of like a multiplier of the speed. Not exactly like that, actually, but the more cores you have, usually the, the faster the CPU is going to be. 
So I would aim for something which is at least 3.4 gigahertz and at least six cores. So I think eighth generation Intel i7. Now here it says up to 3.9 gigahertz. So to reach this speed, you're sure you're gonna have to clock, like to, to boost, as it says, it's a boost clock your CPU. But uh, yeah, so this sort of specific is pretty good. This is pretty legendary actually. But for example, if you had a seventh generation uh, i7 with four cores that goes up to 2.0 gigahertz, that would be very bad. Go for i7 six cores. Now, the other thing you need to look out for is the RAM. RAM is, people think it's what is it responsible for responsible for the you know, speed of your computer. That's not necessarily incorrect, but it's like a good CPU and a good RAM make a computer fast. If you have good CPU and weak RAM, that's not good. If you have great RAM and good, weak CPU, that's not good either. So you want a good, uh, good RAM, good CPU. What is a good RAM though? So for RAM in this case, it says that we have 16 gigabytes DDR4, 2600 millihertz. I'm gonna explain to you what this means. First, the RAM is used in music production as a way to store the open libraries that you have. So when you open up, for example, a strings patch in contact, maybe you see like the string patch uses two gigabytes of RAM. That means two gigabytes of your RAM are being, you know, occupied by the strings patch. And when you play a note on the strings patch, usually it either streams that note, the, the sample of the note from the RAM or from the hard drive. Uh, in this case, it will stream it from the RAM because you loaded the, the, the library in the RAM. Now, the, the delay between the, the, the time in which you press your button, uh, your note, and the time in which the note is being uh, reproduced is determined by the speed of your RAM. So 16 gigabytes is the, how, how much RAM you can use in one bit. DDR4 and the megahertz determine how fast it is. Usually DDR4 are strong and faster than DDR3 RAMs. And also the megahertz are the most important part. So 2,600 2, megahertz is pretty damn good. I wouldn't buy a RAM which is DDR3 with 1,500 or something, you know? One thing I need to say about RAM is that people usually go for like 32 gigabytes or whatever, 64. Now in laptops, they usually you tend to have either 8, 16, or 32 gigabytes. But there's also the, RAM, the laptops with 16 gigabytes that allow you to expand, uh, expand the RAM up to 32 by buying an additional uh, bank of RAM. So let's talk about that though. You don't necessarily need to, if, especially if you're a beginner, you don't necessarily need to go for 32 gigabytes of RAM. My Asus ROG has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And on that computer, as I told you before, I've wrote my Paris of the Caribbean cover, which is quite huge. And that computer is still strong enough to read. Why? Because I use the parge function. Now, it's true that some string libraries or some orchestral libraries in general, when you load them, you load them into your contact, they're going to take two gigabytes. So it's like if you open eight patches of that library, your, your, your RAM is like done for. But if you use the parge function, that is going to use like it's the same patch might use 200 megabytes compared to two gigabytes. So if you're smart about the way you compose, the smart about the way you optimize your DW, your like, 16 gigabytes of RAM are going to last you a long time, especially if you just began. Uh, so personally, I've been composing music for five years. I'm just now, right now, I'm getting to the point where I need to go over 16 gigabytes. But for the first five years, I didn't. Now, of course, you want to get a laptop which is gonna, yeah, with peripherals which are going to be powerful enough to be able to withstand your musical process for a few years. But if you're just a beginner, 16 gigabytes are going to be right. If you've been composing music already for like two or three years and you're fairly good at it and your projects use, you know, 14 gigabytes of RAM, 12 gigabytes, then yeah, go for a 32 gigabyte RAM uh, laptop or for a laptop with 16 gigabytes that, uh, that enables you to go up to, to 32 when you want to. But go for something that has a good uh, megahertz ratio. Now, the third thing you need to look out for is the storage. Now, in terms of storage, I mean, SSD drive, HDD drive, uh, usually SSD drives are way faster than HDD drives. Uh, right now, this, this computer says uh, it has uh, 256 gigabyte PCI Express SSD. The PCI Express SSD drives are the faster ones right now, if, I think, uh, in the market. So you're going to have 256 gigabytes of complete speed. But that is going to be just about enough to, hold, like, to, to have your operating system into it to have a few softwares into it and your DAW and a few libraries. It's not going to be enough, uh, you know, to load those of libraries into it. So the ideal thing is to get something like a combo. So here you have a combo, which comes with a one terabyte SSHD. This, I suppose, is a hybrid between SSD and HD. It's going to be probably fast. I, I'm not sure. Surely it's going to be faster than a normal 
HDD. Uh, sometimes you get one terabyte HDD. And when it's an HDD, like hard drive, it says, other than the hard drive, it says RPM, like uh, 5,400 RPM. That number is the speed of your hard drive. I would go for something that has 7,200 RPM at least, or I would go for something that has maybe one terabyte SSD drive, but that would be super expensive. So a good thing to do is, like I did with my Asus ROG, uh, either you can buy a laptop that allows you to customize it and add SSD drives into it, in my Asus ROG, I have something like this, like a 256 SSD, a one terabyte hard drive, and then I bought a one terabyte SSD and put it inside because I could customize it. Or you can buy something that has, a, you know, like this one, and then you buy an external SSD drive, which you connect with USB. That's not the fastest solution, though. You know, it's, it's not going to be as fast as having an SSD drive plugged inside the computer, but it's better probably than using an HDD drive. So that's for um, storage. Of course, if you like, the, the faster the storage is, the faster your projects are going to load, your libraries are going to load. Also, in terms of graphics card, again, like you don't need a graphics card unless you want to play. Uh, if you buy a computer without a graphics card, it's going to cost you way less. Now, uh, with that aside, so that those are the things you need to look out for in a computer configuration, in a laptop. If I forgot anything, I'm going to add it in the description of this video or in the comments. And again, if you have advice yourself about laptops, leave it in the comments for sure. And uh, I'm also going to leave in the description of the video a few of the configurations which I recommend for music production laptops. And that will be all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.